The EU's foreign ministers have agreed to impose sanctions on 20 senior officials in Belarus who are suspected of election fraud and of organizing a violent crackdown on protesters. The Eastern European country has seen nearly three full weeks of demonstrations against President Alexander Lukashenko's disputed election win earlier this month. The bloc's sanctions will be introduced gradually. And Lukashenko has responded by threatening EU members, Lithuania and Poland, with countermeasures. Our political editor, Darren McCaffrey, has this report. After weeks of mounting protests, an increasingly defiant president and a vocal Russia, EU foreign ministers meeting in Berlin have been struggling to agree on what the EU can and will do next with Belarus. Today, though, they agreed on the introduction of gradual sanctions against more than a dozen individuals. The initial list was short. It has been increasing on in the last days. It was at the beginning in 12, uh, then escalated to almost 20. I think it will still escalate in the following days. And second, because we want to have a, a progressive uh, approach in order to, to show to the people who are already very, very much engaged in this kind of activities, both from the fraudulent uh, elections and from the unacceptable repression of the manifestations. For analysts here in Brussels, sanctions will only be effective if they're properly applied. They need to you know, come up with a very robust and joint and quick um, conclusion. And yes, I think the sanctions should be serious. They shouldn't just be seen as being you know, symbolic, meaning more than five or, more, five or ten people. Um, and I would say they should be you know, focused on you know, really senior officials. President Lukashenko has threatened to retaliate, though, by cutting off trans routes and boycotting Lithuanian ports. For the opposition are clear that sanctions won't bring about change, but only the people of Belarus. I think that uh, every country has to decide for itself uh, uh, what they want to do just to support Belarusian people. And if they think that sanctions is the uh, way to help us, so maybe it's uh, a proper way. I I'm not sure about this, but we will see. The history will show us. The EU has so far proceeded with caution, recognising that this might be a long and difficult battle ahead, with foreign ministers and leaders due to discuss their next moves next month. Darren McCaffrey, Euronews, Brussels. Svetlana Tikhonovskaya was Lukashenko's main rival in the election. She has since become the face of the country's opposition movement and is now living in exile in neighbouring Lithuania. I asked her a short while ago how she plans to keep pressuring the government the will of uh, uh, Belarusian people. So uh, people are striking now, people going out on demonstration every day, and we are sure that we will not stop until this, uh, the authorities will step away, because our society isn't ready to obey the dictator anymore. Our society uh, will not just be able to forgive and to forget all the crimes uh, they committed and we will stand until we win. Yesterday I spoke to uh, one of your uh, close colleagues, uh, Maria Kolonoskova, and she uh, rejected uh, a role for Russia in terms of settling dispute. But let me put the question to you. Why not involve the Kremlin? Uh, you know, uh, Russia is our neighbor, and we have a wonder wonderful relationship with Russia. But uh, we understand that uh, our protest, the uh, Belarusians' people's protest, it is only inside our country. You know, it's, uh, it, um, it's the problem uh, Belarusian people have to solve. And uh, we, um, um, we want uh, to go out from this political crisis just through uh, negotiations. And, but, and we want to, um, this to be done only with the Belarusian people. But if we need uh, any international uh, mediation in this nego negotiation, so uh, all the countries, including Russia, uh, are invited. Now, you've called repeatedly for dialogue with President Alexander Lukashenko. If you had a message for him today, what would that be? I would ask him, I think, just to listen to his people. Uh, 
uh, to listen to will of the of his people and to understand that we are not ready to live with him anymore to uh, just just step away and let the country to uh, you know to, uh, to to exist without him it is possible and it should be done for safe of everybody uh, in Belarus